it is very awesome to have you here. I am super, super excited, excited to be co-hosting this webinar with two absolutely amazing people and savvy experts, Anne and Jason. Anne, Jason, how are you guys doing? Doing great, Joanna. Good to hear. I'm doing good as well. Very good to hear as well. Thank you so much for making time and for sharing uh, your knowledge on your field of expertise. I really, really appreciate. Um, so don't worry uh, if you missed a little bit of my short introduction or if there is any part that you want to revisit. As I said, the webinar is going to be recorded and everyone who enrolled will have access to it. So if there are any parts that you would like to review, uh, you will be free to do so. Um, everyone will be getting the recording as well. So I guess that what we could start with would be to explain why we want to talk about customer engagement. Um, customer engagement, in my opinion, has been a very salient matter of discussion for very many years. I would even say that in those, you know, um, sweet, sweet pre-pandemic times when things were allegedly easier because we could have been doing them in person, well, it was also a thing. You were still attracting customers. Probably you were interacting with them in a different way. Um, we would like to see what other options are there. Uh, is it really necessary to be doing things face to face? Uh, and I hope that today's webinar will prove that there are many other awesome ways and other methods to achieve that. It is also important because Customers are basically the core around which our businesses revolve, be it, you know, a small organization, a bigger institution, a startup. I guess I can safely say that, yeah, there wouldn't be much happening if the customers weren't with us. Um, so my hope for today is to show you that regardless of the position you're in, the challenges that you may have, there's always a solution that can be implemented for you to engage, keep, and interact with customers just the way you would like to. Um, so let me start with walking you through a game plan for today. Um, what we have on the agenda are a couple of points. The first one that we will start with is short introduction. We will be telling you who we are, what we do, and what are our backgrounds. And after this part, Anne will walk us through COVID-19 digital engagement report that she and her team at Twilio did. Later on, she will discuss customer engagement survey for 2021. So we will be looking at current trends, what customers currently need, and how these needs can be addressed. And then um, to illustrate that, you know, uh, customer was customer engagement was a pivotal point, uh, even in the past before the pandemic hit us, uh, along with Jason, I would like to walk you through uh, the case study of our project that we um, managed together. Um, I would like to tell you how it all started, how it continued and what were the fruits of our labor. Then, as all the good things, our meeting would be slowly coming to an end, but to pick your spirits up after Anne gives you the summary, I will tell you about the bonus that is prepared for today. Uh, I will tell you exactly what you can expect after the webinar. And then we will wrap up with the Q&A um, Q session. So feel free to ask the questions throughout the whole webinar, but I would be super grateful if you could use Zoom's uh, Q&A panel. Uh, we will do our best to answer as many as possible, but of course we have to keep time in mind. Um, so without any further ado, let me hand it over to Anne. Great, thank you so much for the introduction, Joanna. As uh, Joanna was saying, my name is Anne Uckerman. I uh, work as the principal field marketing manager for Twilio here in the DAC region, which means I'm responsible for all the German speaking markets. And I am in the business of customer engagement. I have been working in marketing for uh, a good 20 years now, uh, essentially doing anything that you can in terms of customer experience management, meaning I focus on customer retention. Um, I look at service design and how customer journeys are built out and designed. Uh, 10 years of my time I've spent uh, with research and analytics in the marketing field and the last five years of my career, I was fortunate enough to work in the very fast paced technology industry. Over to you, Jason. All right. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Joanna. My name is Jason Perkins. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Bonzo. 
so I've been in the industry on cross-channel communication uh, for about 12 years, nine years specifically in driving digital customer acquisition. And we'll dig into that in a little bit of what, how our platform kind of intertwines with that and specifically seven years in the marketing communications tech side uh, of, of the industry. And like, like Anne said, super excited to be here. And, and obviously we'll be digesting a lot of this uh, as we go to the use case. So then, hello again, my name is Joanna Jabłońska and I'm working at Pogot as delivery team lead. Um, I have been actually working with customers for good nine years, I would say. And of course I have been working within various industries. Um, However, I would say that was always a common denominator. My goal was always to figure out what are the needs that the customers I work with um, and try to address them in the most efficient way uh, to find the best solution. Uh, for the last three years, it also translated into me managing some of the projects that our customers have at Polcode and finding the right talent of people who would be able to deliver those projects successfully. Uh, in my everyday work, I also support an amazing team of delivery managers, uh, both when it comes to project management, team management, and all the daily issues of working in IT. So with that said, I guess it would be the time for us to take a look at the digital engagement survey. So Anne, once again, over to you. Uh, what I will uh, introduce in the next couple of minutes are a few results from a survey that Twilio has run. Twilio being a customer engagement platform, we offer digital services uh, for communication APIs. So essentially building out the tools for uh, organizations to get in touch and interact with their customers, which means once the pandemic hit for us in Twilio, we saw a big surge and demand in the services that we provide. And we were very interested in seeing what this new situation actually means for digital transformation and digital engagement. So what we did was we went ahead and asked 2,500 organizations around the world on four different continents about their experience throughout the first couple of months in the pandemic. So the first results that we're going to see are from June last year. And what we found was that COVID dramatically changed digital transformation in terms of speed. It really sped up uh, the agenda by which corporations and organizations were organizing around the world. If you go to the next slide, um, what we found was that on average, organizations told us that their digital communication strategy had been accelerated by more than six years. The countries where we saw the greatest acceleration were Germany and Japan, where we actually st started on a slightly lower level of digitalization. So the speed there became even greater. Um, and in Germany, we had 6.7 years. Um, on average, in Japan, it was 7.2 years, uh, how strongly the digital communication strategies were accelerated. If you wanna to go to the next slide. We also found that COVID helped to break down barriers to digital transformation that organizations previously were facing. Particularly in the executive space, we saw much greater acceptance. So approval and buy-in became more of a situation that um, organizations had and that helped drive the digital agenda. It also became apparent to those executives that without a digital transformation strategy, they would be left behind uh, being taken over by competition. So digital just moved into the center of everybody's focus. What this means overall for customer engagement is that we saw increases in digital transformation budgets. So more money was being put towards projects that help digital transformation. Organizations expanded their digital communication channels. So there was a focus on omni-channel. There were more than what was previously available. You could now engage new messaging ways. You could now engage artificial intelligence, build out chatbots. You could use video. Almost all companies were looking for these new ways of engaging with their customers. 
And what we saw as well is that 99% of our respondents said the technologies that are now available actually enabled remote workers, opening up a completely new market for organizations to reach out to for talent. And we saw that again reflected when we ran our annual customer uh, state of customer engagement report, which is an annual um, survey that we run in the beginning of every year. And if you wanna move uh, to the next slide, um, I'm gonna walk you through the results, trends and conclusions that we saw here. The five themes that emerged from the question how did 2020 transform the way we communicate and what does the future of digital engagement look like? Were for, for one uh, with, if you wanna switch to the next slide, please. Um, we saw an increase in digital interactions. We saw an increase in digital touch points. And what that means is there suddenly is a lot more data available for organizations to look at. They are able to develop a lot more customer insights and therefore build out more personalized experiences for their customers. This is something that uh, we saw building out strongly over the whole course of 2020 and more digital touch points um, being something that customers came to expect as well. The second trend that we saw was what I was mentioning at the end um, of the digital COVID report was the agile workforce was being built out. We saw cloud migration accelerate. So a lot more companies were moving away from uh, remote and from legacy systems into the clouds. Um, businesses did not just utilize this new environment uh, externally in engaging with their customers, but also internally, meaning the ways how people interact with each other in a business and the way that we work together has changed and has opened up new agile ways of working for a lot of organizations. The third trend we saw is that industries that are heavily regulated, which previously had been laggards in regards to digitalization, so healthcare, financial services, public sector, areas where data privacy is imperent, where um, there has been a lot of hesitation moving into the clouds, now saw a great need to adapt and to speed up digitalization efforts and actually became first adopters that, lend, that led with a customer-centric uh, approach. The fourth trend that we saw was digital suddenly was everywhere. Um, particularly in the way that we, when we moved into home offices, um, we started living in Zoom. Every call became a video meeting. So companies started to integrate this also into their customer engagement uh, strategies and into their interactions. For example, I bought a kitchen uh, during the pandemic and all of that, every sampling was done via video. And we saw this in Twilio that uh, we had an increase of more than 350% of usage throughout the year of 2020. And I'm sure a lot of you um, are in a situation where you have been um, interacting over video, not just uh, with your work and with your company, but also with your family and friends. And the final trend, the fifth trend that we saw is that it clearly is a time to build. While there are a lot of things that you can do with digital, not everything is applicable to your specific situation and to your specific organization. So what a lot of the organizations that we particularly work with recognize is that a great experience doesn't come out of the box. What they do is they take prepared APIs, they work with prepared um, infrastructures and they then adapt. So 2020 and also 2021 really was a year where a lot of organizations would focus on their developers more, where they would rely on software development in order to help them adapt to the situation and to take on new modes of communication and build it out so that it fits their specific business needs. So to sum this all up and bring it together, 2020 year 
2020 was the year of digital engagement that we did not see coming. The way the pandemic changed uh, everything that how we connect, how we interact, how we communicate with family, business, um, customers and colleagues, that is not going to, to go away. That digital transformation that we've seen uh, just builds out trends that are here to stay. And 2021, the year that we're currently working our way through, really is just the on-ramp to the digital engagement that we've been that we've been seeing. And a perfect example of that is uh, what Bonzo and Polco build out together. So I'm going to hand it over to Joanna and Jason to tell you exactly what it was that they did Thank in there. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, I really liked what you said about us interacting, you know, digitally, not only at work, but at, you know, private lives, I guess. I believe everyone had an experience of interacting with somebody who is not super um, IT savvy. Um, and it can be the case with customers as well, of course, but I'm really happy what you're saying. I can see that, you know, the trends seem pretty optimistic uh, and it's good that they're staying. So um, to elaborate on, you know, out of the box solutions, what I would like to do now is to tell a bit more about the cooperation uh, Bonzo and Polko had with implementation of the tools provided by Twilio. So generally everything began some time ago, but let me walk you through maybe uh, for what is the usual situation when we first started interacting with the customers. So very often it is the case when the customers reach out to us, they have cornucopia of business knowledge, business know-how. They have a lot of experience. They know exactly what they need. But the only thing that sometimes may be missing is the technical expertise. They very often have some tentative ideas of what the result could be, but still they need somebody who can assist them in making the best decisions. So basically, this is the moment when me and my team steps in. Uh, and what we try to do is to, you know, figure out what is exactly that motivates you, what you want to achieve and how we can be of help. Um, the portfolio that Twilio offers is so broad that basically I feel very confident in saying that, you know, uh, there's a thing for everybody um, and the options are basically endless. So sometimes customers want to have a programmable chat implemented. Sometimes they think of automating their email dispatch, be it, you know, like day-to-day -day communication, be it sending newsletters, and this can be, for instance, easily achieved via SendGrid. Um, sometimes customers want to have a better handle of, the, of their relations with the customer. They want to make sure that the um, relationship is nourished. So they are asking about implementing CRMs into their systems. Um, I guess that another example would be people coming to us asking about automating lead generation and lead conversion to give more time to their teams to focus on other tasks. And yeah, as I was saying, of course, it's not everything that Twilio has to offer. Um, there are many, many other features that can be used to enhance the customer engagement. But before we start discussing um, individual specific solutions, we start with a very, very simple thing. We start with a conversation. And this is exactly how it started with Jason and Bonzo. Uh, we started in 2000, uh, 2019, sorry. Uh, and I remember, contrary to today, Poland is struck with heat wave. Uh, it was a cold, nice February, so I definitely missed that times. But basically what we started with, uh, I arranged a call with Jason to discuss what his needs are. And as we were talking, I could see that Jason is super passionate and super certain of what he wants to achieve. So as we had this first initial conversation, the ideas of solutions sort sort of you know started budding in my head. But definitely, I'm not the only specialist available at Paul Code. At this stage, I decided to engage other people who can um, assist with advisory, who can assist with choosing the best technologies. So after this initial call, we had uh, our communication much more frequent. We determined what are the goals, what are the priorities, what is the expected results, what is the minimal, minimal viable product. Uh, and then when the plan was ready, it was very important 
for me personally, but also on a company level, and I'm sure uh, it is the very same case with Jason, uh, we wanted to put a great, great emphasis on communication. Um, take into consideration the fact that Jason is located in the US, we are in Poland, so there is a little bit of um, time difference. So we needed to be sure that communication is smooth and it doesn't rely only on um, chats or, I don't know, calls that we would have uh, throughout the course of development. So it was also very important to set what other communication aspects can be used in the development process so that everybody stays on the same page. Um, another thing that I believe was important was to discuss who serves which role and what are the responsibilities in the project so that everyone had a clear idea of what they are supposed to do. Um, and of course, some arrangements were set in stone and they were never to change, but taking into consideration that um, products, projects evolve, requirements evolve, we had to also leave some margin for a little bit more flexibility. Um, and for instance, to give you an example, uh, we started with one full stack developer who was working on a web application, but then as um, ideas were coming in, uh, the product was growing, um, suddenly it turned out that also we would like to address the need of having a mobile app. So when you construct an application, of course, it's important to have a developer, but also you need other people, uh, designers, somebody who would look at data architecture. So as I was saying, uh, along the path of development, the needs were changing and we were doing our best to have them addressed. Um, so now I would like to hand it to you, Jason. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the outcomes of the project and about Bonzo itself? Yeah, absolutely. So Joanna, first off, thank you for that. And I mean, obviously that report is stunning and how you know, COVID in itself has just sped up the digital influence by six years. I'm not surprised by that, hearing from our customers across the United States on how they're adopting into digital communication and omni-channel communication. A um, little bit about Bonzo, guys. Bonzo is a sales engagement tool for the, what we like to call the monitored advisor. So United States, we've got mortgage loan officers, real estate agents, insurance agents, financial planners, anybody that is a service-based that is selling a product and is owning their business, Bonzo was built for them. And, and the reason why that, I'll give you the why, obviously we know that if you're an advisor, if you're a business owner, you wear a lot of hats, right? You're not only taking care of your customers, you're doing the actual files or whatever you're, it is that you're doing. You are required to not only do the actual work that you're licensed to do, but do the sales, the marketing, the communication, keeping in touch with past clients, uh, converting new leads coming in, and so that is why we built Bonzo. My background uh, is specifically in the real estate industry within the MarTech. And I found a lot of gaps in the way that uh, our advisors were communicating, um, specifically for lead conversion. Leads come in, the average response time for uh, advisors was past 30 minutes. Well, a report from MIT found out that if you, if you respond past 30 minutes, you are a 1% conversion. But if you can respond to them in three minutes or less, you are 100 times more likely to convert that lead. But also at the same time, we need to be communicating on the channels that cu customers want to communicate on, whether it be text, whether it be phone, whether it be email, and also at the same time, providing relevance, right? So I'm a big believer in the advisor space. People do business with people, not brands. So how do we empower the person behind the brand, right? The advisor their voice, right? We connect through relevancy in the advisor space. So Bonzo is, Bonzo is built to automate the voice of the advisor through omni-channel omni approach, right? So let's, the, the cleanest example I can give you, let's say a lead comes in, we're going to create a cadence where uh, the, through the advisor's voice, but through automation, through partnership with Twilio, it's going to send them out a text message, a video, an email, a voice message to convert that lead and, and on their terms, right? So the other thing too about this guys is that in the advisor space, anybody who is, who is owning their business knows that CRMs can be completely overwhelming and complicated. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't categorize Bonzo as a CRM. I categorize it as a sales engagement or conversation platform. 
but we're we're grouped into that, right? So think of a big sales force. If you're a, if you're a salesperson, you get into uh, you know a big CRM, you immediately get overwhelmed. You don't want to use it because there's so many bells and whistles you want in. Like you, you just like you get you get overwhelmed. You don't want to do it. So the biggest another challenge for creating Bonzo was creating simplicity on the front end, right? Having a UX that is simple to navigate, to get in and out. We have a five minute rule in Bonzo, get in and out in under five minutes. We don't want you to spend time in tech. We want you to leverage your voice and get back to what you are good at doing, which is selling and having conversations with, with prospects and customers. So those, that was the solution. Those were the challenge. And obviously, you know, a uh, couple things here too, that just to digest uh, with Twilio, uh, why did we opt for Twilio? The answer is very simple. First off, Twilio, uh, as you can see from, from Anne's report, is at the forefront of optimizing change and influence and data. They are continuously looking and paying attention to how customers are communicating and how they can pivot around that. The other thing too is that the API on Twilio is crazy robust, but even <laughs> the craziest thing is that it's simple to use. Our developers we're able to easily get into the API and understand and digest because there's so many bells and whistles that you can create within Twilio, but having that support from the Twilio side to easily navigate and find exactly what we needed to build based off a use case that we had envisioned, right? On our vision board, bringing that to Twilio and saying, this is what we need to build. This is what we want to build. And these are the attributes within Twilio that are going to help us build it. That was, that saved us so much time. And, you know, um, the, the other thing too I want to point out here is um, we got, I like to say we got lucky because I mean, as business, owner, business owners, anybody watching this, you've probably dealt with a lot of, uh, you know, third party uh, partners, contractors, et cetera. Uh, and you probably recycled through a lot of them to find which fits your business the most. Probably some of them failed. They overpromised, underdelivered. I can promise you guys this, both Twilio's product and their ability, ability to deliver the products, they, they did not, they delivered exactly what they said they're going to deliver. And the same thing on pull code side, right? Like Joanna was mentioning, you know, uh, and I think we can go to the next slide here, but uh, you know, uh, with pull code, it was, uh, we got lucky. We got, we got super lucky. And I'm super grateful that we found Joanna and pull code because they listened to our needs. Uh, they paid attention to what we wanted to build. They had a plethora of developers within their warehouse and we were able to pick and choose the developers that had the right talent for the right project, right? Same thing on the UX side and building that front end design, we were able to go to Pol Polco's portfolio of developers and find the right individual with the right talent that we needed uh, for our business. And that saved us, I would say, not only you know, months and months of research and R&D, but also money, right? Time is money. And, and being able to partner with both of these, um, both of Twilio and Polco right out of the gates, we are so grateful for that. So with the implementation with Twilio, uh, obviously, you know, like I, like I mentioned before, Bonzo is an omni-channel approach to communication. So with Twilio's API, we were able to build a very robust backend with text, video texting, image texting, email automation with uh, Twilio's partner, SendGrid, uh, voice conferencing. Right now, guys, we're in the middle. My dev team is in a what's called a Twilio hackathon. So the cool thing about Twilio is that they want to run with you. They want to su succeed with you. They want to do everything they can to make sure that you are empowered and, you're, and you are going to be successful. So they actually put our developers in what's called a Twilio hackathon. It's kind of a weird name for that. Be honest with you, Ann. No, <laughs> no, but it's they really we we look at how can we. It's a two day uh, development uh, where we have full access to all of Twilio's uh, le uh, lead developers. And uh, Gil, it's not an advertisement for Twilio. I promise, they're not paying me. I'm just telling you guys the story because it's very successful that we were getting in a, a two day development mastermind with their leaders to build out exactly what we want, and it was. Uh, and they're still in it today. So we're presenting at the end of the day. It's, it's really awesome what Twilio is able to do. Um, it also cool. The other cool thing about this partnership is that we made it very easy for us to integrate with third parties like Gmail, like Outlook, like Calendly, all these things and all these systems that our advisor space uses uh, to communicate and want to make their job easier. Twilio made that easier on the back end. 
of course there's going to be challenges along the way, right? There's never not going to be a hiccup, right? When we go into building something with anybody. But what matters is, is that can you uh, navigate as a speedboat around those challenges to get to the finish line? And working with Twilio and Polco together, right? We were able to do that efficiently. And that is the biggest win for us uh, is that we were able to take a project that typically would take developers nine to 12 months. And we were able to build an MVP in three months with this partnership. So I just wanted to obviously, you know, kind of talk about that experience working with Twilio and working with Pull Code and how, you know, using Twilio's robust API and partnership and Pull Code's ability to scale uh, what they do as a partnership and find the right partners in mind uh, to build what we needed to build. Uh, we're just incredibly grateful for that, um, for that journey. So thank you guys. Thank you as well, Jason. Um, like I wanted to build on what you said about challenges. Um, throughout all the conversations we had, and even today, what Jason was emphasizing, that what mattered most for Bonzo was simplicity. And apparently many people think that, okay, simplicity is simple. But very often it is the case that behind a very simple, user-friendly, easy-to-use front-end, there is a very robust backend. So the logic of the application is much more complex than what the end user sees. So um, when we were working on the application, it was super important for us to, yes, make it simple, but not simplistic, but at the same time to make sure that the drive, the engine of the whole thing was running perfectly. Um, and also, if you're building such a cool tool with, you know, so many complicated operations, so many requests being sent back and forth, what is very important is to prepare the right environment, uh, because otherwise you end up, you know, with a tool of uh, which potential is not fully used, if I can say so. So it was also quite challenging but important to discuss what is the end environment in which the application is going to be placed. Um, and also- the last thing I wanna just point out there, Joanna, with Twilio's products, you know, obviously we, uh, we, we had an MVP that we launched, mm -hmm. but we, know, we knew that we were going to have a lot more customers on the platform yeah. market this and, and grew our partnerships. And that's the other thing with, with Twilio's product is that it's built for scale, right? So. As, as you bring in more conversations, more communications, more development, that's the coolest thing about Twilio, in my opinion, is that it's built for scale, right? It runs where you are today, but can run where you want to go tomorrow. And that is critical for any development, any, any dev team to make sure that you're able to handle, uh, you know, hopefully new volume and new communication tools coming in the door. Yeah, that's true. This was also something I perceive as a challenge, um, exciting one, I must say, uh, that you always need to into, you need to take into consideration that what you're building now will never stay the same. It will not be the same tool in a month, in a year. So also from developers' perspective, I guess it is very important to know from the start what are the long-term goals, what other features there might be, so that their code is constructed in a very clean, readable way and the solution that they are working on is scalable, as you said, Jason. Yeah, and one last thing I just want to point out, Twilio and Polcode are not paying me to do this. I'm, a, I am just a absolute fan and I am so grateful. And if I can share knowledge to help people skip levels, right, and save time, um, that's, that's the biggest takeaway for me today is, is to know that Twilio and Polcode, you guys are working together, saved us an enormous amount of time, an enormous amount of money. So thank you guys for that. My pleasure, Jason. Um, so I guess that now we can, you know, shift focus on Bonzo. Uh, tell us about the outcomes of the project. What tool which, uh, that you have today? What is it? Yeah, we, so we've got over a thousand customers on our platform today, really bit built on simplicity, that five minute rule. Advisors can get in and get out of our platform immediately, but create conversations at scale or convert leads immediately as they come in the door. Going back to that uh, two to three minute rule on, on connecting with a, a prospect or a lead, our system's able to do that because of uh, the robust back end, but simple on the front end. It really enables advisors to communicate at scale, right? Um, with their customers, leads, prospects, and it's all in one simple dashboard and really drive, like I talked about earlier, personal connections. It's all about relevancy, right? We look at the trends and how people communicate. If you send out a gen generic email today, it's not going to capture the customer. They're not gonna move the needle on the customer. 
they're going to see that as another company branded email that's not personable. So we found the gap that customers want to have a one-to-one, -one, right? With the person that they trust within the organization. And so driving those personal connections and cool, the cool thing too, with, with a lot of this, we'd be able to evolve it and add Giphy to our messaging. And, and again, more personalized video to drive that connection because connections, conversations drive trust and trust drives sales. So that's our whole philosophy. And through these partnerships, we're able to build that. Um, and really um, we've only touched the surface with, with what Twilio can provide us from a service base. Uh, right now we're building in a, uh, a, a hot live transfer tool within the program, um, which is super robust, but it allows our uh, call center team to connect immediately with uh, the advisor uh, as soon as the lead wants to have a conversation. So there are so many cool tools in Twilio that they keep, uh, you know, I'm just eating it up, right? But uh, they, a lot of cool stuff they keep pushing out. And again, it's easily digestible for me because I'm not a developer, right? I'm, I'm a business owner. And so, but for me as a, as a business owner, it's easy for me to understand and digest and then communicate back to the dev team. So here's the tool on Twilio. Let's build around the block here. So speaking about one-on-one, -on -one, uh, if you got interested by what Jason was telling you about uh, Bonzo, um, or maybe you started thinking about which tools would be helpful, which tools would boost your business. Um, I am happy to say that Polcode will be offering one-on-one -on -one free consultations on customer engagement. So if you're interested, just leave a sign in the chat. You can type anything from, you know, uh, customer engagement, interested, yay, uh, your choice. Uh, the team would be reaching out to you, scheduling appointments, um, so you can have a, a chat with us. Um, so yeah, I would say that you know, do not pass the the opportunity because who knows that maybe maybe you would be the next star co-host of the next webinar. So I would encourage you to give us a try and give yourself a chance to just have a conversation. Um, so having said that, I guess we can move on to the summary. So back to you, Anne. That's a perfect segue. Thank you so much, Joanna. I was just going to say. Um, as we've learned from uh, your project recap, the most important thing is to start with a con uh, conversation. Um, and that plays perfectly into the, the whole topic of customer engagement. I think we've very credibly established that digital is the way forward. Um, it is here to stay. And what it does is it enables you to just have a better experience for your customers it will make it easier for you to run your processes. It will give you greater insights because there will be a whole host of new data that you will have access to. And what you then just need to figure out is what is it exactly that you want to do? What are your needs? And then how do you customize and how do you build for those needs? Are you able to do this within your own organization? Um, and it's easy enough to, to just get started. I mean, literally sign up and, and have a try. Or is there something else that you that you want where you need expertise or where you just need additional hands that can do the development for you, in which case Polcode is one of the great partners that we have that would be in a perfect position to help you building out projects, evolve the products, evolve your customer experience, evolve your customer journeys, and just help you grow and scale as well um, as implementing all the digital transformation uh, that you want uh, to see your business scale and grow. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, I was checking the time, sorry. <clears throat> I was checking the time. Uh, we, I think, still have a couple of minutes to answer the questions. Um, so let me open the Q&A channel. Um, the first question is, why should I choose Twilio? What, what makes it better than the competitive solutions? And I believe, Anne, you would be the oh. perfect person. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I, I don't know if I should, should go into detail after everything that Jason already advertised, um, but generally what makes Twilio a great product, in my personal opinion, is that it is very customizable. So if you have any specifications in your business that makes you think I can't use something that is out of the box or my situation as an organization might change. I may grow. I may open up different product segments or something else that needs you to enable new channels or whatever the situation may be. Twilio just gives you a lot of different bits and pieces that you can 
build exactly that tool that fits your situation. So that's one of the one of the USPs. And another thing, as I just said, you can literally go to Twilio.com, put in, um, build out an account and start building. It doesn't cost you anything. You can get started for free. And after, after your first initial couple of trials, you will only pay for what you use. So it is essentially risk-free. And I think that's, uh, that's what makes Twilio a great starting point. Thank you. Um, the next question reads, um, what is the biggest challenge in Twilio implementation process from the product owner perspective? So Jason, would you share your insights? Yeah, sure. And, and that's a good question, right? Because uh, you, you got to think of, um, you know, what, what's most important right now and, and what can we work towards as we, as we continue to build. I think the, the biggest challenge for us, right, as a business was to figure out uh, what, what is most important? What can we build today that we can build off of tomorrow? Um, and so, I mean, from an implementation process, it was, it was pretty streamlined um, once we figured out what that was. But uh, for us, it was figuring out what do we want to start from the core and then build off of. I think, you know, that was just an internal discussion within the company to figure out because Twilio has a lot of different products to choose from. But where can we where can we build from the core and then build off of from there, right? It's almost like a branch. Think of like a branch, right? You you plant the seed, you, you start to grow, it, and then you branch off from there. And just figuring out where that core kind of seed you want to put in Twilio, because again, you, you the sky's the limit on what you want to build within Twilio. But just figuring out that that initial seed of, of where we want to start that core or MVP or whatever that looks like initial idea, and then building off from there. But as far as the implementation communication, that was very streamlined, but that was our challenge. Thank you so much. Um, then the next question is, uh, how to prepare my company before starting Twilio implementation project with a tech partner? Um, so I guess if nobody minds, I will handle this one. Um, I guess it starts the very usual way, whatever your needs may be. Uh, as I said, we love to start with a conversation. Uh, we want to uncover the intricacies of your business. We want to understand what you do, who you are, who your customers are, what are their needs. Um, so definitely what you have to prepare is for a lot of talking, uh, a lot of meetings to figure out what's the scope of the project. Um, at times it gets intensive. Uh, there are many people, there are many experts coming in, uh, you know, dropping hints, dropping insight. But um, from you know customers perspective if somebody starts cooperation uh, cooperation with us the thing i want to stress we are always there from the very beginning to the very end of the project um so we guide you if you need guidance we assist if you need assistance but we always also agree to certain levels of independency uh, we do not impose that project management is on our side it can be if it is required. If you have your own product owner, project manager, that's okay with us as well. Um, so there are so many different approaches that, you know, uh, we always try to find something that would help you prepare and then have the cooperation with the tech partner. And for now, that has been the last question. Let me quickly check the chat as well. Uh, there were questions about if the slides are going to be shared, but my colleagues answered already, but just to um, confirm, yes, presentation is going to be shared, the recording is going to be shared as well, and I guess we are five minutes after time, so if there aren't any other questions, what is left is for me to thank you so much, both you, Anne, and Jason, for the wonderful cooperation we had, and everyone who is present, thank you so much for finding time and joining us on today's webinar. Absolute pleasure, Joanna. Thanks, thanks everyone. For joining us. And thank thanks you for so everybody much. for attending. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye.